Hey everyone, um, so first off, sorry about the lighting, uh, as you can see I'm in my room for right now because I'm trying, because I was trying to get the best lighting I could, it's nighttime right now, so, um, uh, so I apologize for that. Uh, the other thing is I am recording this in, uh, in preparation for Octo for October, I am getting started on the next set of reviews, uh, which will be Halloween oriented, which uh, which I'm really excited for. In fact, as of this recording, I had just watched the first review for this week, so expect it at the beginning of October. Uh, with that said, this is actually going to be a disclaimer a warning for anyone curious of and watching the mo the documentary that i had just sat down to watch it is called haunters the art of the scare uh, this is not a formal review this is just a disclaimer which i will put at the beginning of the video to give warning to anyone who is curious about this. Art, uh, Haunters of the Art of the Scare is a documentary that is about the, evolu the evolution of haunted houses and how some have taken it to the extreme. The reason why I'm saying this is because there are there is footage in this movie, uh, the majority of it, which may trigger anxiety attacks. Uh, I myself have anxiety. I have watched this documentary before. I have actually just, as of this recording, seen it again, and it triggers an anxiety attack. Uh, so I am warning anyone who is absolutely curious about this documentary to be careful. If you have anxiety at all, especially severe anxiety, or any level of anxiety, honestly, Watch this in an open area room. Watch this in your living room. Do not watch this in your bedroom. Do not watch this in uh, in any closed area. Watch this in an open area. Also, watch it with somebody. Watch it with your parents, your friends, whomever. Do not watch this alone. As someone who loves horror, I also care about the well-being of, of my fellow horror fans. I care about the well-being of my viewers what little viewers I have, so that they don't end up in a severe mental mess. That is my concern. So, and one other thing, I will, during the review, you know that I like to present footage and stills of the, of the movie that I have reviewed. I will not under any circumstance or show footage from McCamey Manor. I will not do it. I refuse to give the give Russ McCamey any acknowledgement, any uh, any traffic, anything like that. I am only using his name and I will show his face once. Just once. He will not, other than that, he, I will show no footage. I will not bring up his face again. That is it. That is all I will do for that review. The rest of it will indeed be showing other people who enjoy haunting, uh, hauntings, who enjoy scaring people for, so that those people can have fun. That is what that is what haunts is about. And that's what it should be about. This is a disclaimer. Now I'm going to go ahead and get you guys to what you've been waiting for. Please enjoy the review for Haunters, the Art of the Scare. Now October, October's here and year's finally out. All the bad stuff's finally gone away and nothing is going to ruin Halloween Horror Nights.
I'm gonna be a culture critic here. I get scared because I don't care. And it's October, everybody! You know what that means? One month until election day! <coughs> oh, also, Halloween is a thing, but mostly election day. But speaking of Halloween, I am actually here to review the first week of October. Well, not, not the month, but the movie that I will be reviewing this week. It is a documentary about how haunted houses have become such a national phenomenon throughout our nation and how extreme some are. I am speaking, of course, of Haunters, the Art of the Scare. Now, Haunters the Art of Scare is a documentary that was released in about eh, 2013, 2014 that details about how haunted houses become so popular every year. How uh, uh, testimonies of various scare actors and, uh, and haunted house uh, owners try to up the ante to be as entertaining as possible and how far is too far and well it's a documentary that I like but also hate how can I put this this documentary is not just is Focused, and I mean unbearably focused on one particular person. His name is Russ McNamee. And he's a fucking asshole. He is a fucking terrible human being. This guy is awful as a person. Like, they'll show his life. They'll show, oh, we have dogs. We donate the dog food that, gives, that people give to us away we uh i mean i used to be in the navy and i hire people who were in the military blah and it's like no no you're a fucking criminal using using a legal waiver your legal assistant of a wife and also using the excuse of haunted house entertainment as a means to sate your sexual desire to jerk off to people being tortured. This documentary, I'll, I will say, I think, I do believe this, this documentary is an indictment on him, but there are times where I do feel like they're, they are trying, they are giving him quite a bit of time to make his case, which fine, but it doesn't do, it doesn't work very well. What I'm saying is, I feel like the documentary is liking him too much. That's the problem. But this guy had committed so many crimes and just basically says so much frightening things that it, it's, it's amazing he was able to stay up for as long as he did. Thankfully, he's been shut down. So there's that. And, but just like when, when you openly admit to committing crimes for the sake of your stupid, stupid haunted house. Like, how are you not in jail? How have you not been sued? Like, seriously. How have you not gone on, had to file chapter... Nine bankruptcy. I, I may be saying that wrong. How? How have you not? That's what's baffling about this guy. I hate this guy. I have never met this guy. And if I did, I'd probably kick him in the nuts. I mean, this is a guy who would hire teenagers to basically torture people. To abuse them. This isn't scary. This isn't entertaining. This is... Horrible. This is horrible things, and you're, and you're allowing teenagers to act on this? There are other therapeutic ways 
for teenagers to to let out their anger and shoving their teachers in dog shit is not one of them. Jesus Christ. With that said, I do like this documentary because when it doesn't show him, when it doesn't talk about him, it talks about the rest of the haunts. It shows all these other cool imaginative haunted houses. And it's really, and it's, and that's where it's so much more engaging. Where it is so much more fun to listen and watch and just see these people have the time of their lives. One particular woman I am absolutely in love with. I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, but she is a, she is considered a legendary career scare actor. She's been doing this since the 70s. She's been, she does this every year and she's such an awesome woman. I love this woman. And of course they don't just go with their side. They also interview the spouses and how his, how her husband is, does get concerned about her when she goes out to hunt because sometimes when you scare someone, expect to be punched in the face. And they do acknowledge that, but she does, but she shows how she's evolved her costumes, how she protects herself when she goes out to do her job. And that's a lot of fun. Uh, there's another guy that I really like named Donald, who is a who is a prop maker. This guy has worked on some production on some productions. Like I'm not like he worked on Van Helsing. Like as bad as that movie is and don't worry. I know I say this a lot, but I will get to that movie. But knowing he worked on that piece of shit is still pretty cool. Like we're seeing people who are talented here. This guy loves what he does, and he feels like because he's not getting the work he deserves, he's using the haunted house as an outlet to show his skill. And that is awesome. How has no one given him a much bigger job in prop making after seeing what he does with this? It took a convention, a convention for people to notice him. <laughs> and I mean and the other thing is like he also had just got recently married at this at the time of this his wife isn't keen on it he thinks she thinks that he spends too much time on this like way too much because he plans this pretty early in the year because because you know it's got to be a really good haunted house it's got to have all it and and he feels like she's not and look I get both sides of the argument I do I do because this is his thing this is what he loves he loves doing this and it doesn't feel like she's supporting him because but she's seeing but she sees it less as a job and more as an obsession and again I get that I totally do but I mean, and there was even one particular scene where I went, oh my god, this, I hope to god this ends happily. I really do. And I hope they are still going strong years later. I, I really, really, really do. But there's a scene where he is doing an interview with the documentarians. And he gets a text saying, look, if you don't come home tonight, don't, uh, if you don't come home the next hour, do not come home at all tonight. And I went, Oh God, but luckily it ends happily. It ends with her helping him out with this big event that he has to do that he ends up in the top five for. And it ends happily. It really does. There are other people. There are, uh, Jason Bloom makes an appearance. The Saska sisters make an appearance. Uh, they talk. They briefly talk about Halloween Horror Nights, which I don't know why they don't talk about that more and stuff. You know who? Because it, it, it is when they show 
other haunts, even some of the other more extreme ones, which I, I'm not against discussing those, but it always felt like this was the one they had to talk about. And, and here are these others that are crossing lines too, but uh, for real terror up the ante, they're not being discussed enough. And the way this documentary plays it is that they're not as bad as this guy. I'm sorry, but they're doing things too that are pretty bad. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's not, it, it isn't one of those documentaries that I love or hate. It's one I love and hate. And it, it, it I, I just wish it focused more on what the, what hunts are supposed to do, and not focus on what this one particular guy does. All in all, Hunter is the art of the scare, despite having the issues that it has with the subject matter. It's it does it did get me excited for when I was finally able to go to Halloween Horror Nights, and it really does. And watching it now, again a year later, it was very bittersweet because I don't get to this year. But it just shows like how much we miss these sort of things, how much we want these things to happen again and happen soon, and in a bigger capacity. And it's just, it's not going to happen this year. But, with that said, like I said, I have a love-hate relationship with this documentary. I love it because it does show plenty of uh, people who do love their art, who do love their craft, who love doing what they do. And that's great. And it shows them as regular people, too. But, it all, but on the other side, while... It is pretty much the main subject. It is meant to be an indictment of this person. It really, really takes away from everything else. It because you're, they're so focused on this person. It it makes every time he comes on screen, it makes you angry. It makes you hate wanting to watch this, and it makes you feel. And when they show the horrible things he does, it does throw you into a bit of panic attack if you if that's not your sort of thing. So yeah, it it's a it's a two it's either or. But I will say this about Hunter's The Art of the Scare. It did have potential to be a really, really, really good documentary. But, I mean, it's that's not what it's, that's not what it's going to be. It, it's meant to do this particular thing. And it does at least detail how bad of a person he is. It's just, I wish they had shown his comeuppance in a way. I, or, I should say, they did. Or, well, luckily, they did. They did show his comeuppance. But they, I, I would have liked to see, like, a final nail in the coffin. <laughs> it's like, it's what he deserves. With that said, I give Haunters, The Art of the Scare, a spectacular 7 out of 10. I think, I think with when it shows everyone else, it's a great movie. It's a fun movie. You enjoy it. When it shows this one particular person... It's disgusting and vile. And that's saying a lot from a guy who likes watching exploitation. But there's a difference between that and shoving vomit or shit in someone's face. And committing various crimes. Well, everyone, October is just starting and I can't wait to show you what I got planned next week. I'm, I'm Adam the Culture Critic. I get scared because I don't care. And 
I'm gonna go cry because I can't go to Halloween Horror Nights this year. Maximum screech, folks!